Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to the camper renovation series. I cannot believe it's been a year since we renovated our camper, gave it a little makeover. And the number one question that I get on all of my renovation videos is, how is it holding up? What does it look like now? Is there anything that I wish that I would have done differently? So today I'm gonna go on a little walkthrough of the camper and tell you guys everything. We just got back from a camping trip and I have cleaned the entire camper top to bottom. So I figured this is as good of a time as any to show you guys what it looks like now in 2021, a year after we have renovated. So let's jump right into it. So if you guys are new here, this is a 2017 Keystone Bullet ultralight camper that we got used in 2019. There was nothing really wrong with it but we wanted to give it a little bit of a facelift. Everything was really dark and brown. I will link my entire renovation series down below for you to check out. So this is the view when you walk through the front door. The camper is 25 feet. It has bunks in the back and a queen size bed in the front with a kitchen and a dinette that sits in the slide out with a bathroom in the back corner. So as you can see, we pretty much painted everything white just to give it that light and bright feel that we were looking for. It makes it feel much bigger when we're in it and the paint has held up surprisingly well. I know a lot of people's concerns with white paint are, you know, scuffs and scratches, but a little magic eraser and you are good to go. So like I said, overall the paint has held up really, really well. The only places that I'm really seeing some wear and tear are along the bathroom door. And to be really honest with you guys, I think I may have just closed the door when the paint was still wet initially. I don't think that this is actually something that has been happening over the course of the year. I think this has been this way to begin with and I maybe just didn't notice. I still absolutely love that we did the darker paint on the bottom cabinets and the white on top. I think it looks timeless and it does hide a lot of that dirt. Now the next area that I want to show you guys is our dinette. So probably one of my most popular videos is how to reupholster your dinette cushions without sewing. And these have held up immaculately. I love the fabric that I chose. I haven't noticed any wear and tear on these. I know some people had asked questions about using staples and the cardboard, if it would bow, I haven't noticed any of that. I just absolutely love these Mexican blankets that we used. They're super comfy to sit on. And you know what, if a little one spills something, it's really easy to clean up. And if there were to be a stain, I think it would be hidden really well. Now, the next thing I wanna to talk to you guys about is the wallpaper. There were so many questions about how I installed the wallpaper, what to do, how it held up, and again, I will link my initial video down below for you guys. And overall, I would say the wallpaper has held up really, really well. The only places that it has not held up well is back in our bedroom. And I think part of this has to do with the fact that this is a sloped wall. Because if you look at the doors and the other straight wall that I used the wallpaper on, I don't see any peeling or bubbling but along the back wall, it has kind of come apart in some places. We actually didn't use our camper for six months in the winter. And when we pulled it back to the house, a back portion of it had come down off the wall. So we just stuck it back up there. And now, unfortunately, it doesn't line up properly anymore. So if I were to do this project again, I think that I would just use an additional adhesive behind the wallpaper just to make sure that it's on there really nice and tight and it can't move or come off. Now I never made a specific video for this, but we bought these roller shades from Ikea for almost every window in the camper. We absolutely love them. They're easy to use, they're white. So, you know, you just kind of have to be aware that you might see fingerprints or bugs and things like that. But 
I love the seamless look of it with the white background. They're super easy to pull down and pull back up. We did end up having to buy one additional pull down roller shade for the main window in our dinette just because Ikea did not have a roller shade that was large enough. So I will link that down below if you guys kind of have the same setup as we do and you're interested in these. They work super well and it looks just like all the other shades. All right guys, so this is where it gets a little bit tricky the peel and stick tile situation. Now I bought my peel and stick tiles from Amazon because they were a little bit cheaper than the Tic Tac tile that a lot of people use. And initially I thought that these were fantastic. I was super stoked about it. I recommended them to everyone. Well, after a few months, I started noticing that the tiles somehow were separating. So I overlapped all the tiles on the grout line and I started to notice that there was a little gap. And I was like, how, how can that be? How can that happen? I, it's stickers, I overlapped them. Well, I think what happens is in the heat of the summer, air got underneath of the tiles. So it kind of bowed a little bit, causing them to separate. So this was a little nitpicky thing that bothered me. You can especially kind of see it in the kitchen along the middle line. But once we pulled the camper back out of storage after the winter, the tiles were just falling off everywhere, especially in the bathroom. Oh, this was so disappointing to me because I think the tiles are like $35 a pack, but you know, we bought like six packs of tiles to use. And the way that the tiles had come off the wall in the bathroom, especially through the winter and the summer, they were so stiff that there was no way to be able to repurpose them and even glue them back to the wall. So as you can see, there is a huge glaring hole while we decide what we're gonna do. If we're gonna bite the bullet and order the tiles again and just try one more time, or if we're gonna take it all down and start over with something completely different. So here's my two cents. If I were to do it again, I definitely would use these tiles again just because I love the look of them. I like that it's, you know, a cheaper option. It makes a huge impact for the money that you spend. It's lightweight because I do know that some people actually use real tiles, which looks beautiful, but just keep in mind that does add weight to the camper. So again, if I were to do this project again, I would probably use the same peel and stick tiles, but I would add an extra adhesive. I mean, even something like Gorilla Glue that is just weatherproof and you know is not gonna budge. Because for me, you know, while I may get sick of the wallpaper someday or the paint colors, I think the subway tile is super timeless. It's easy to clean off, it's wipeable. So, you know, if it's stuck on there, I don't care. And if you do get tired of it, even if there's glue underneath, you can always just scrape it off and sand down the remainder. So on my video, which I'll add above of the peel and stick tile where I show how I put it in. You know, I cleaned the walls with TSP substitute and I did all the things that you're supposed to do, but it just did not withhold against the weather like I thought it was going to. So I would definitely just take the time and add adhesive, especially to, you know, the overlapping seams and things like that. So another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about are some things that we added that I didn't make specific videos for, but that have held up really well and that have really been functional and efficient and just things that have made our life in the camper easier when we use it. So the first thing is this shower rod. I apologize for this bad video, but it's such a tight space that I couldn't really film it properly. But this is a movable shower rod, which means when you're standing you know, by the sink or in the bathroom, you push it back and it actually gives you more space than if you just had a shower curtain hanging straight down. And then the same vice versa, when you're in the shower, you actually push the curtain out and you have much more elbow room when you're in the shower. So my husband is actually the one that found this. I'll link it below, but he's a really big guy. He's 6'4", so it is tight in that shower for him. So just having you know that foot of extra space when you swing the shower curtain out makes a huge difference. I highly recommend getting one of these. Another thing that we added is this larger faucet, which first of all, looks amazing. It's the same matte black as all of the hardware in the camper. 
and it just gives you that little more space that you need to be able to get under the sink, even just for washing your hands or filling a cup. This was a great add-on that we did. And while we're here in the bathroom, this basket and these hooks have been perfect. We typically will put our little like travel bags up in the basket or extra toilet paper, things like that fits perfectly. And then these hooks are awesome because they're really heavy duty. They are able to hold, you know, a big towel over them without falling off. We have these hooks all over the camper. They came in a pack of like 10 or 12 on Amazon. They are awesome. We also have a basket that we added in the bedroom area, which is fantastic. It's up nice and high and it's perfect for storing little things like baseball hats or wallets or any other kind of little accessories that you don't want to just throw in the closet. These baskets are perfect for that. And a lot of people have asked how we fixed these things to the wall and we just used our V screws, which are a little bit shorter than regular screws and screwed them right into the wall and they've held up great. All right, and the last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about are just the picture frames and other things I've hung up. I've used command strips, the like little Velcro plastic kind and all the pictures have stayed on the wall perfectly. They haven't been affected by the heat or the cold at all the pictures really haven't budged. So if you guys are looking to add pictures to your wall or, you know, little decorative aspects and you don't wanna like screw holes into the wall, I can highly recommend using command strips for this. I love having art and things like that on the wall just because it makes it feel so much more personal when you go in there. Decorating the camper after the fact to make it feel more like us and make it feel more like a home has been really, really awesome. All right, my friends, I am so happy that you guys stuck around and watched this video. I hope that I answered all the questions that you guys had about how the camper renovation has held up over the past year. If you have any more questions, please leave them below. If you like these videos, please hit that subscribe button and click the little bell so you never miss a video. I plan on making some more camper content because it's been so popular with you guys. I've had some questions about storage and organization and things like that. So if you'd like to see that kind of video, just again, leave a comment below and I will try and film that during our next camping trip. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.